Sue Moroni. E te manga ya te fare te nakwe. Um, Mr. Chair, thank you for the opportunity um, to take a call on the vote estimates for social development. Because let's get real. Let's get real and look at the reality of the situation. The member who's just resumed her seat is trying to convince New Zealand that emergency housing in this country is well covered. Well, why are people sleeping in cars? Why are an increasing number of people sleeping in garages? And why are people in Te Awamutu resorting to sleeping in recycling skips? That's the question that I want to pose to that government. If they truly believe that these estimates mean that emergency housing is well covered, they need to get real. Because they're completely out of touch with the situation that is developing at a rapid rate in our country. Mr Chair, the vote estimates in fact make things worse for housing problems in the regions. And um, the, Dr Smith looks confused about why that is, but it's pretty simple actually, because Paula Bennett rolled out her last minute um, desperate plan to pay people $5,000 to move from Auckland to the regions. And some of the places that she's trying to encourage those people to move to are places like Hamilton, are places like Narawahia, are places like Te Awamutu, places where we already know we have our own developing housing crisis thanks to that government. We know that there are increasing numbers of people who are, who are facing homelessness. And I just want to remind the House of the tragic story that I thought we would never see in Aotearoa, New Zealand, let alone uh, a relatively wealthy society like Te Awamutu, where a man who fell on hard times ended up sleeping in a recycling skip and ended up losing his life in that process. That is a story that that government should be deeply ashamed of because it tells the story of what is really happening in the provinces, the homelessness that really exists. And these are the places that Paula Bennett wants to spend $5,000 bringing people from Auckland down to those same towns in order to make the housing crisis worse for the people who already are trying to live there and can't afford to live there. Mr. Mr Chair, the nonsense of the vote estimates saying that the, that the government will prepare, be prepared to fund seven days of emergency housing for people who they are putting in hotels and motels. That's what emergency housing amounts to in New Zealand under the National Party. And when it comes to weeks like we've just had in, in Hamilton with the field days and the hotels and the motels are full, what chance emergency housing for any family over the course of that week? Well, none under their failed emergency housing plan that they say is, is well covered, according to the National Party speakers. In the Herald today, there's a story about, um, about a uh, family from um, South Auckland. They're in a hotel because that's their emergency housing option. It's a, um, a mother with three children. The children are aged 13, 12 and 10. They are paying, or will have to pay back, $2,013 a week in rent for that emergency housing. The hotel in Papatoetoe, a one-bedroom hotel in Papatoetoe, that is their emergency housing option. So that, for the first seven days, the state's going to pay that. But after that, that family is going to rack up $2,013 a week that they are going to have to pay back at some point. But here's the really shameful fact that the government needs to take on, play, in, on board is that they were moved into this one-bedroom hotel, these, these four people, to stay together at that cost because what they'd been doing up until then is that they'd been sharing, they'd been, they'd been in a, um, a Housing New Zealand house that wasn't theirs. They'd moved in with family members. Two of them were sleeping in the garage. The mother and the 13-year-old were sleeping together in a bed in the garage, and the other two children were sharing another bedroom. They had to move out of there because they, the, the, their niece, who was um, threatened with eviction if that continued to happen, um, had to move them on. They've ended up, um, they, had, they made three applications to work an income 
to try and get their housing needs met. The first time, they were completely and utterly declined. They had nowhere to live, but they were declined. The second time, work and income lost their application. And how many times have members of parliament heard that story as constituents come to see us and see the shambles that work and income is? Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. Oh, Jane